Now today on Coffee Group we are talking about kids and food. There is a lot of advice and information out there, but just how useful is it? Joining us this morning, authors Dr Julie Basali and Vanessa Baxter. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Mm. Lovely to have you in the studio. Um, first up, let's start with you, Vanessa. Um, our viewers might recognise you from MasterChef 2013, wasn't it? But you, um, you've also got a background in psychology. So yeah, how important right. is it to have a healthy relationship with our food to our mental health? It's hugely important and I think it's becoming even more paramount that how important it is at the moment. You've got the issue around what we're putting into our body and how that relates to our mental health and obviously eating really great fresh food and cooking from scratch is important. Mm. But the other side of it of course is just having a really healthy relationship with the idea of eating and not actually getting caught up in having a restrictive diet or worrying about what we should or shouldn't eat. Mm. but just actually in general being really balanced about it and enjoying food for all that comes with it which is the social the collaborative nature part of the community and just eating in a really kind of balanced way yeah. because otherwise yeah unfortunately it becomes unhealthy we do a lot of us do spend a lot of time worrying about that we're not eating the right thing we're feeling guilty when you're eating the wrong thing so don't feel guilty just go with it absolutely um julie let's start going right back to baby food then so what is the most nutrition nutritious introductions to solids? Yeah, well, I mean, I always encourage mums to introduce vegetables first, which I know seems really logical, but there's so much conflicting advice out there at the moment. But start with vegetables, because that's what you want your kids to eat pretty much most for the rest of their lives, yeah. um, quickly followed by a high iron source. Um, because babies at six months of age, their iron stores really drop off, so you do want to introduce a high iron source. So what sort of iron source are we talking? Meat, if possible. Yeah. It really is our most absorbed form of iron. And obviously for those that are vegetarian, you want to go down the green leafy vegetable route if you can. Okay, good luck with that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vanessa, how important do you think it is to get kids involved in the kitchen? I think it's super important because as early as we can get them in the kitchen and engaged mm -hmm. with making the food and being a part of it then uh, it also helps to broaden their appetite for different ranges of foods yeah. so if they're involved in cutting and peeling and being in the kitchen with you then they're being exposed to a whole heap of foods rather than just seeing something on the plate and feeling like compelled to have to try it. The problem is though is that they reach a certain age because when they're little you can get them to do that and they love it uh, then they get to a certain age when they could actually be useful and um, they lose all interest in helping them out. <laughs> well they may lose all interest at that point in helping you out you can still still get them in to kind of help put the dinner onto the plates and get it off to the table. So even if you're just drawing them in for those last few minutes For the before, presentation. For the presentation. The all important presentation. But then if you've done your work and they've already been part of the kitchen brigade, yeah. then hopefully they've got a pretty broad appetite of what they're eating anyway. And you've got some good recipes in your new book too. Yeah, I've got some great recipes in there and on each recipe it gives top tips and tricks on being able to expand that recipe, but it also uh, gives you what helpers can do. So if you're one of those people that's a little bit like a control freak in the kitchen you're not sure how to encourage someone to come in and help you because you don't know where to start yeah. in getting them oh, to be part idea. of it yeah. each recipe says get your helper to do this and yeah. this so it gives help, some good baby, tips but just don't ruin it don't ruin exactly. it exactly um, julie you too are an author your book is really um, a great guy for parents isn't it yeah it really is so obviously it's quite evidence-based because yeah. i think that's so important today is, is getting the latest research but it has a huge dose of the practical side so literally covering the when what how of introducing babies to solids yeah. and i've literally got like a six month plan so if mums want to follow it week by week they can literally do that without having to think too much. That's good because have things changed in the way that we are told to introduce solids to our baby? Yeah there's been some major changes particularly around introducing allergenic foods so we've mm. had significant guidelines change with that just last year so it's actually you want to get the allergenic foods in early. Right because they used to say avoid peanut butter and everything. Yes for up to three years yeah. but what we've seen is this exponential rise in allergy in children so it's actually completely turned around so they're now. actually saying maybe introduce it earlier yeah as soon as possible so I talk all about that in the book that's really interesting yeah. that's um that's a fascinating turnaround yeah an mm. absolute turnaround um so what do you think both of you is the most important thing parents should take away from today's coffee group Vanessa we'll start with you I think it's just exposing, or exactly um, confirming what Julie's just said. Expose the kids to as much as you possibly can from as young an age as possible. Mm -hmm. Don't be fearful of letting them into the kitchen. Get them in, be fearless about introducing them to everything and also letting them have a go at preparation as yeah. well. And make them, how, any tips on how you can make them enjoy vegetables because they reach a certain age once again. <laughs> and they sort of make them enjoy. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you will forcefully enjoy this vegetable. Yeah. I think cooking them in lots of different ways, yeah. you know, don't just be stuck on one way of cooking them. But I mean, even last night, just for my kids, you know, I had a stack of rocket in the fridge and instead of making a salad, I tossed it in a little bit of uh, olive oil and some sautéed onion and some uh, cherry tomatoes through it and a sprinkle of lemon juice and they demolished the whole yeah. lot. If I'd given them to them as a salad, they may not have eaten it. So Excellent. it's just sort of thinking a little bit outside, outside the box. Outside school, which you can help with. And Julie, what about you? What's your piece oh, of advice? I mean, just to second that and start as you intend to carry on, you know, so vegetables, get them in first yeah. because then they're more likely to keep them going. Absolutely. And if you in introduce them to things that are really sweet early on, that's what they develop the taste for, isn't it? So yeah, that's difficult. Unfortunately. Mm. Yeah. Unfortunately. Hey, well, that's been great. And two fantastic books as well. Aren't you two both very accomplished? <laughs> well, I don't know. We're both a little bit crazy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> great information. Great advice, too. Thank, Thank you very much, you. Julie and Vanessa. Now, Julie and Vanessa are giving two of our viewers a book each. You can go to the Facebook page, the Cafe Facebook page, to enter. And good luck with that. They're both tremendous books.